Hi, and welcome to The Key, where we unlock all that God has for you. I'm your host, Jen Lee, and my job is to connect you with the God who created you for a purpose. In John 10.10, 10, it says that the thief came only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give them life, and life more abundantly. Amen. I hope you guys are having a glorious week. I'm going to share with you a little bit about something that happened in my family. Um, I think it was over the summer, if I remember correctly. And I just want to ask you one question. Have you felt like sometime in the last year or so that the enemy has stolen something from you? I think a lot of us um, in some way, shape, or form felt like something was stolen that was not supposed to be stolen. Um, a place, you know, and it might be something really important in your life. It could have to do with your health. It could have to do with a relationship. Could be physical items. Could be money. Could be a job that you thought you would be in for a while. But I just want to encourage you with a personal testimony today about God bringing back what was stolen um, even better. Even better than what we originally had. How the Lord can move in those situations if you continue to praise Him. To praise Him and you know, believe that he can turn any situation around. Okay. So here is our testimony. Um, my son often leads worship with me. We kind of have been a duo for many years. He's a senior in high school this year, and he's really, really amazing at guitar. If you're local, you probably know this. If you're not, I will tell you, um, he's gifted. He is gifted with the guitar. I play guitar, but he plays the guitar, if you know what I mean. So um, he, we had given him a really special gift for his 16th birthday. We decided to get him a new electric guitar and get him a higher quality one that he could really enjoy and hopefully keep forever. You know, kind of a keepsake thing is what how I was looking at it. <clears throat> and so he helps lead worship with me very often. He also leads worship at another church with some friends on Saturday nights. So often he's leading on Saturday nights and on Sunday mornings and sometimes on Wednesdays and sometimes other things. <laughs> so he really is uh, using the gifts that God has given him to bring glory to God and to help others to know him. And he got this guitar, this kind of special guitar stolen from <clears throat> the church that he was playing at on a Saturday night. And I feel like I shared some of this on a key video, but I just wanted to bring out a couple things today. Um, you know, this was, it was, it was sad. It was difficult because we just felt like, you know, that was, kind of a keepsake special gift that me and his dad had given him for, you know, a bigger birthday. And I remember when it happened, I mean, I know it's the enemy. I know that. I know who comes to steal and kill and destroy. Okay. Uh, but I was still disappointed that we didn't get the guitar back right away. And honestly, I prayed for it to come back. I prayed for the man to be caught and for the guitar to come back in good shape. You know, that was my prayer. And they did kind of find out who the man was, but I don't know if anything ever happened to him, and we have not received the guitar back. And at first I was really disappointed by that, but I, I want to tell you how what God did through this. So within about um, 24 hours, yeah, it was within 24 hours, the church that he was helping lead at took an offering. I was told by the pastor, because this is a very small church and, you know, in kind of a challenging part of town, I was told by the pastor that this was the biggest single offering that they had ever gotten out of that church. And they went and bought this 
custom made guitar that someone had just made and bought it for my son and presented it to him like the next day. And it was, it is beautiful. It is a beautiful guitar. It's beautiful to play. It's gold. It even has this inlay on the fretboard that has um, like little birds inlaid in it. So of course I thought of like Holy Spirit doves, but you know, they could be eagles or something, but um, really, really, really neat. Just a beautiful guitar. And Dawson, he was thrilled. And God just really started to speak to me through that. You know, that sometimes, sometimes the old thing is not coming back. Sometimes you're not going to, there's the rainbow word right there. Sometimes you're not going to, to get back into that same place, get back into that same job, get back into that same relationship. Sometimes God is moving you into the new thing. Okay. He's replacing it, but he's replacing it with something different because we're all on a journey with the Lord and he wants to keep us moving. He wants to keep us moving forward. And I just wanted to bring you to... Matthew seven eleven. This is what he brought me to today. And I marked it, but of course I'm like, okay, here it is. Um, Matthew seven eleven says, hmm, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also unto them, for this is the law and the prophets. And I wanted to read verse 12 because just now I felt like the Spirit said to um, remember how the Lord told me to pray for this man. And, you know, because we felt angry and I was, I was sad. I just felt like, how could you do that? How could you take my child's gift? You know, that he uses for God. Like, how could you just come and take that? You know, that was kind of hurtful. But right away, the Lord told me instead of getting angry and instead of cursing this man, you know, and, and wishing, you know, terrible things to have, not terrible, but, you know, um, wishing bad things upon him. I want you to bless him. I want you to pray for his salvation. I want you to pray to have that this man would come to know me. And the second that the Lord spoke that to me, I thought, yes, you know, he's. He doesn't have the Lord. That's why he feels like he has to steal from others. He doesn't know about the good, good father. He doesn't know about the father that would provide for him if he would honor God. He doesn't know that. So instead, he lives a life of crime. He lives a life as somebody who is an orphan. He has an orphan spirit. And that is one of the saddest things. So I began to pray for him. And I told the people that were, you know, in this circle, also, like, let's pray for him. Let's not be angry. Let's not say things that the Lord doesn't want us to say. Um, let's pray for him. And it just diffused those feelings. And within 24 hours, my son had a brand new guitar. It was beautiful. And I really feel like it was above and beyond <laughs> the first guitar, which was also very nice. But this was kind of on a new level. So I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, God, for moving us into what you have. I thank you for teaching us. I thank you for being patient with us, Lord, as we sometimes struggle with our emotions or struggle with our flesh. Um, just remember to keep praising him. When these things happen, keep praising praising him. Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. As I read that this morning, I started to sing out some praises and I, then I got an idea for a song and I just sense his presence right now. Even as I think about that, I was, I was singing praises to him right before I turned the camera on, just praising him for his faithfulness praising him. So I, I just pray for a spirit of praise to rise up in you today, that whatever it is, you know, that, that the enemy tries to say, you should focus on this, focus on this terrible thing that happened. I want you to, to say, no, I will continually praise the Lord during this, whether it be a storm or just a little bump in the road, I will praise the Lord, whether it be a deep thing, a deep, deep 
hurt or a wound, praise the Lord today. Praise him for working on your behalf. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Psalm 42, verse 5. I didn't write down this whole thing, but this is the one where David is kind of lamenting to the Lord. And he says, why are you cast down, O my soul? And then he goes on to say, hope in God. He commands himself. He commands his soul, his mind, will, and emotions to hope in God, to continue to have hope. So I just speak hope over you today in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would, um, that you would get into the word today, that you would read some scriptures today to put that life in you, to put that truth in you, that wisdom of God, and that you would, uh, stay on your path for his life. The path that he has for your life today in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would be faithful to that path. You know, the enemy's very good at trying to get a, get our eyes off the prize, to get our to help to make us lose our focus. You know, I have struggled with that. I'll just be very transparent. Um, but the Lord is so good and he keeps saying, go, 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 keep moving, keep moving forward, be faithful in the small things and I will grow you. So I pray that over you today that you'd be faithful in the small things and he will grow you. He will grow you and you will become a blessing to everyone that you are around in the name of Jesus. All right. Thanks you guys. I'm looking over at the dog again. I couldn't keep him quiet out there, so he's in here chewing on something. So if you heard something, that's what it is. But um, I want to invite you. There's a key conference tomorrow morning in Sioux Falls at Open Space, 9 a.m. I do have tickets online. There's a few seats left. Um, that will be on my Facebook page. All right, if you can make it. We are talking about spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. Mm. It's going to be good. It's going to be powerful. So... Thank you for joining me on The Key. I'll see you guys next Friday night. And they do.